I'm Paul Page on YouTube, and this is GP Laps. Indianapolis 500 for the first time online for myself. Welcome to what will hopefully be a nice, long, full race, 200 laps. That's what I'm hoping for today. But with 32 other crazies out there, you never know what could happen, and, and most likely it's it's this one that would cause the end of things. But welcome. I hope everyone's having a nice day. Indianapolis with ISO. I'm so excited for this. I've been unable to contain myself the past week, really. I've spent too much time doing testing and laps around here, and uh, it's, it's hopefully going to be a really good race today. Normally I go into these things and, and just finishing is all I want to do, but I would be lying if I didn't say that I, I want to do well today as well in this. But making it to the end is, is the main thing, as always, that we need to do. Racing in Automobilista 1, this is with the ISO League, who do a ton of historic uh, racing, formula stuff mostly, but some sports cars as well. I think they're doing a Group 5 series right now. And uh, yeah, this is their IndyCar, Indy, Indy 1987 League. And this is one of the rounds, and uh, they've they've let me take part in it. I'll be starting in the fifth position, hopefully today. And uh, we got about 11 minutes of pre-race practice to go. You can see the timer in the middle of the screen there. Uh, and then I think it's straight into the race, or there might be some kind of driver's briefing or something. But it's um, it's not long until the race actually starts. I think at the top of the hour is is when we're set to actually go. So. Um, this will be, if everything goes correctly today, this will be a full 500 mile, 200 lap Indy 500 uh, with 1980s type Indy cars and a full field of, of online drivers uh, and some really talented drivers as well. I'd say, I'd say about half the field uh, has a good shot at winning and a lot of that's just based off of car choice and everything. Um, there are some slower cars in the, in the sim, in the, in the league. And so some good drivers I've been paired with uh, with slower cars, which means even though they're very talented, they're going to have a harder time. But strategy, consistency, and avoiding accidents and other things, that's like always going to be the name of the game with Indy. So there's a lot of, a lot of ups and downs before you get to the end. It is, not, it is not just a simple turn left for three hours. I think anybody that's done one will, will tell you that. Thank you, Went Golfing. I'm, I would love to get a win today, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that's my primary goal. Uh, but if I'm if I'm one thin shooting distance of it at the end, I will. I will try my best today. Uh, I feel really good about my car and my setup and all of that. I'm gonna go out and take advantage of these last ten minutes and see if I can uh, see if I can find a little traffic because the one thing I haven't done much of comparatively is running with traffic. It's just been hard to find find folks. I think a lot of folks are in Europe, so by the time I can get onto the server at night, there's only a couple people in here. So I have done some passing here and there, but not uh, not as much as I would have liked. But let me know, as always, if things look and sound good. We'll be listening to this for the next three hours once I get going. We'll come out of the pits here and uh, just try to rejoin and see if I can pass a few cars with these last ten minutes. Just get a feel for what it's like in traffic, because there is aero sensitivity to the cars. There is a lot of in-cockpit adjustments I'll be doing throughout the race. So simply driving around other cars is a lot different than driving on your own. Get it up to fifth gear here. Just feel it out. So for the in-car adjustments, I'll be talking about this a lot today because there's a lot that goes into making sure you can go fast for the whole race. Uh, I've got anti-roll bars on the front and the rear of the car, so I can stiffen the front to tighten my turn in or make it more stable on turn exit. Uh, and then I can lower the front anti-roll bar to make the car turn better or even oversteer a little bit more on the exit. And kind of similar with the rear. I can crank up the rear bar to uh, help it turn through the center and exit of the corner, or I can soften that to make it less oversteery. So I have found the cars to be extremely sensitive to adjustments. I'll pass underneath one of the slower cars here, or a car that's going slow at the moment. The car is extremely sensitive to adjustments as I got really loose there, and uh, I'll be on the bars quite a lot. Now, I spent, I spent 
a few hours the other day trying to build a sim hub overlay so I could show you all my bar settings and I don't think AMS1 reports those settings to the uh, to sim hub so I couldn't I couldn't make one to help you out but I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing during the whole race as I'm doing it as best I can uh, and you'll be able to see on the wheel cam right to my left of my wheel if you can see it I've got my button box which is where I'm making those adjustments so if I reach down so we got a car spun off to the inside here if I reach down to my button box here most likely I'm making adjustments to my roll bars to uh, change the feeling of the car and I'll be doing that it's not only to tune the handling, but it's also as fuel burns off. Oh, there's a lot of smoke. This doesn't bode too well. A lot of smoke there coming through the short shoot of three and four. And slower car in the bottom there. Um, it's not only just driving the car where you need to make adjustments, but as you burn fuel off, the car's weight dramatically changes. We're running over 40 gallons of fuel on a full tank. And I don't know how much that weighs, but it's quite a lot. So as that burns off the, the handling of the car, the weight of the car actually transfers forward quite a lot. And so uh, you have to make some, you usually go stiffer on the bar to help get the car to turn a little bit better. The tires, the temperature of the tires also plays a big role as, as the right sides heat up and get slidey. If I'm understeering too much, I have to adjust the bars to account for that. To me, the tires are really what's telling me what I need to do to the bars. So if the right front is heating up, I'm understeering. If the right rear is heating up, I'm oversteering. And then traffic. Getting behind another car, and this is the thing, again, I don't have as much experience as I would have liked to do um, before the race, but I know that's going to affect the handling of the car. We're going to get aero wash, and it's going to make the car understeer quite a lot, and that will be... Uh, That will definitely change things. So I'm going to have to take it cautious till I get a, a good feeling for what it's like to drive behind another car. All right. Things feel good, though. Hopefully they all look good, sound good, and uh, get these two side by side in front. We'll see what's, what they're both doing. Sweep underneath. So you, you can see, and I got a few comments about this during the qualifying stream. Which, uh, which I did last weekend. The big numbers in the center of the screen on my dashboard, that is the oil temperature. And that is one of the main things I have to watch. It's good they put it right in front of me. But I have to watch that. If I go over 220 degrees, I'm risking blowing the engine or I'll be damaging the engine. And it is not difficult to get over 220 degrees on full boost. So not only do I have to drive take care of the roll bars, make sure as the fuel burns I'm adjusting the car. I've also got to play with the turbo boost to both keep the temperature down in the car, but also make sure I'm not using too much fuel so I can make my fuel strategy. There's a lot going on. There's a lot more to this than, than meets the eye. And uh, I've done quite a lot of full run practice, so I think I've got a good strategy worked out as the two behind me just crashed. Big crash there. There's a lot of chaos happening right now. I'm a little bit worried about this. I did see a comment uh, asking about cautions. Yes, there can be full course cautions. I don't know what the plan is for this race today, but I did watch back a couple of the ISO races from last season, and uh, they seem to use them fairly sparingly, only when there's a big crash that has a few cars involved. So for single car spins, they tend not to, and I believe that's because there's a bit of trickiness with yellow flags, and this is one of the things I'm most worried about today. Beyond just the general chaos is the yellow flag procedures. You have to be careful not to pass the cars in front of you. Uh, you also have to be careful not to be hanging too far back or else the sim will black flag you for that. It's it's quirky. And uh, they've, the league has given plenty of information about how it works. I've just never done it before. So I, um, I hope I can avoid analyzing myself because I don't follow the yellow flag rules. <laughs> Or something that would be a shameful way to get out of the race a bit high there so I have a feeling there'll be at least one yellow flag at some point in this race I don't know when it's gonna be or exactly what that'll do to my race strategy yet and things like that we're gonna have to figure it out on the fly but yeah it's quite crazy right now this week I've been on the server here doing some practice and stuff, and I think the most other drivers I saw is that car in the bottom there getting very loose. 
I think the most other cars I saw at the same time was like six. And of course, I think I never had more than two cars in front of me at any point. Right to 220 there in the water temp, or the uh, oil temperature. Let's crank down the boost one notch. I'll talk more about my race strategy in a second here once I uh, round out a couple of laps. I got two minutes, so I'm gonna pit in next time. And uh, pitting is the third thing. So if I could pick three things that I'm worried about today, pitting is the final of those three, purely because of just the other people on the pit lane. And uh, there is no speed limit today in the pits, <laughs> just like it was in the 80s. So you're kind of left up to your own discretion as to how fast you feel like entering the pits. You could really push and gain substantial time in the order of five plus seconds if you really pushed it into the stall, but you leave yourself very little margin if somebody was to pull out in front of you or be in a spot that you didn't expect them to be. So it is tricky. So I'll come around here and we'll uh, try a pit entry and hope that I don't run into anything too crazy here. But swing down, decided I'll, I'll run it in hot, but then get on the brakes here if I don't see anybody. Get it down the gears. I think this is where my stall's going to be, if I'm lucky. Get it down to first gear here. Heel toe a little bit on the downshifts, just to get the car not to spin. Lock it up a bit right into the stall. I would be happy with that during the race. There is full collision in the pits, um, so... This is why I'm worried about it. <laughs> Full collision in the pits, people going drastically different speeds. You saw it, this is why they got rid of, I mean, among other reasons, but it's one of the reasons they got rid of no speed limits in real life, because you've got cars exiting at 50 miles an hour, just pulling out of their stall, and you have somebody going 200 coming in. So I think that'll get a bit easier as the race goes. Uh, I imagine there'll be some attrition, so towards the end of the event, probably be a bit easier to do the pits, but the first couple stops are going to be hairy, I imagine. All right, there's 30 seconds left in this practice. I think there's about 15 minutes until the race starts. Um, so for anybody that's looking to get a drink or something before, before we get into things. How, so this is a question, how, how and where am I expecting to finish today? So I feel very confident about my car. I don't know outright pace where I am. I don't have the fastest car combination of chassis and engine. So I think if, if the other drivers driving some of the faster cars are really on it today, it would be hard to beat them. Um, but I feel very, very good about my general race craft. And so as long as none of these crazy things that we've been talking about happen, uh, you know, with crashes in the pits, yellow flag behavior stuff, or just general kind of chaos getting around traffic. If I can, especially through the first few stints, get through that, I think I can I can get a top 10 today. Uh, I would be very happy with a nice top 10 finish on the lead lap and everything like that. If I can push and get further up than that, then, then uh, that will be where I end up for things. But, all right, so as the practice ends here, Promise me none of you are going to tell the other drivers about this, but I wanted to just show you my uh, my setup. It's in a qualifying session. Or not my setup, my, um, my strategy. Welcome to the spreadsheets portion of this broadcast today. So this is my, my tentative strategy. Now, the likelihood that I'm going to follow this would only happen if... Uh, if, if we ran green the entire race, which never say never, there could be just some single car spins and stuff and they never yellow flag it. And then we end up green the whole race. So if that was the case, I'd be making six pit stops today. I did the math five stops. I can make it. I could do a five stop race, which sounds like it could be much better, but overall I would be about two minutes slower, two minutes slower doing a, a five stop because of how much I'd have to save. So six, six stops is the plan. And uh, the plan will be to go full tanks for the first three of those and see how things are playing out. If I'm in the slipstream, maybe I can be saving some fuel and, uh, and pushing it further. But if I can do the first three 31 lap stints with full tanks, I can then for the last three stops, take advantage of some of the fuel savings and actually short fill it. 33 gallons is about how much fuel I can put in while they're changing tires and have it all equal out. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to put in less fuel than 33 if I'm taking four tires. 
And that is that is correct, Aiden. It is 1.3 gallons per lap. <laughs> so that is the um, that is the strategy for today. But I'm gonna have to work on it as we go because who knows? Who knows? All right, briefing. The race is 200 laps with a rolling start. Beware, the pace car is very slow through the corners. They're, they're saying this about six times. I have experienced this. I did an offline start, which the AI is is a little rough around here, but it was actually good practice to do the uh, to do the rolling start. It is a two wide start today, which I know will be disappointing for some of you. I'm pretty grateful for that because of just all of the chaos and everything. Um, I think it'll be better off to be a two wide, but I'll be on the inside. So there's no pit speed limit. I have to keep left of the yellow line when entering pit lane. Yep. Keep in the right lane once I'm in the pits. Yep. Watch your mirrors for oncoming cars when leaving. Yes. And the parked pace car is non-collidable. Thankfully, I found this out in testing. A lot of my test sessions, I was the last pit stall right behind the pace car and there is no space. I, I angled myself. I tried to park as far back in my pit stall as I possibly could. And there is no way to, to pull out without hitting the pace car, without reversing. And so they, uh, luckily I sent a video to the league admin and they were able to make the pace car non-collidable. So we don't have to worry about hitting the pace car. Yeah, I've already done, uh, I've already done qualifying, did it last weekend. And, uh, if you're curious, 15 minutes would be more than enough time to watch the run. The link is in the description of this stream. So, um, uh, you could go watch that and be ready for the race with me. <laughs> All right. So we don't need to use the apron when entering, but we need to stay on the apron until exiting turn two. That is hard to do. It's not easy. So I got to check my pit stall location in a minute. Uh, if there's a yellow y lap, if there's a yellow lap, it's race to the flag. Race to the flag under yellow. <laughs> oh boy. And then the positions get frozen. I think you get a flashing yellow flag until you take it. And then green flag means green to all cars. I can overtake immediately when the green is shown. That includes before the start finish line. So if I'm being lapped, don't race the faster cars. So don't engage in the slipstream battle with them. Be cooperative. Any questions? Oh boy. No questions for me. It's This is going to be... I'm a bit nervous. I, I just really hope... I think I'm mostly nervous that there'll be a crash towards the beginning and then... You know, there won't be much of a show for this. So let's, let's hope I can make it through the first couple stints at least. I hope I do better than if any of you were here during the uh, during the Indy, IndyCar 2 500 I did. I'm still, I haven't done another one yet because I'm a bit depressed about the whole thing. Yeah, I think they don't have a lot of say over the racing back to the yellow thing. So, And there's been a clarification here uh, about the fuel. So there is a maximum, I just whistled there, there is a maximum amount of fuel that you can use in this race. It's 277 gallons. And at first I was a little scared of this uh, because that's another thing just to track, but I can't really burn that much fuel during the race. Uh, with the strategy I'm doing, with the overheating of the car especially, there's just not a way for me to actually um, to, to burn more than, than 277 gallons. So I think I'll be fine. On my calculated strategy, I have about 12 extra gallons of fuel that I won't be using. So I'm going to be about 12 gallons less than the limit. All right. I'm going to go out. We'll do a quick just spotting lap, make sure everything feels good, and I know where my pit stall is. Sure, I know where everything everything is as much as I can. Oh my gosh, thank you for the, the super chat there. Who was that? I can't see it. Uh, it's going to be a bit hard for me, as always, when I'm racing online. I don't... Obviously, the uh, being safe and uh, not hitting other drivers and stuff is my main concern. So I may go quiet at various points, but thank you, Scullies. Axelson win. 
in spirit for sure. That would be that would be ideal today. That would be ideal. All right, we'll come out and uh, you can't really see when you turn out into the pits. All right, I'm gonna try a hot exit just to make sure I can do that. Crank up the boost here. A lot of cars. Coming through turn two in the apron is not trivial. It's, it's quite challenging. I'll keep it in third gear. I'll actually use a little brake there. Remember, these cars don't, do not have a lot of downforce on them. And so they're definitely made to be going very fast through fast corners, not, not, uh, not on the apron for sure. Ooh, see that oversteer there? That's where we need to change the bars a lot. <laughs> All right, we'll do one lap and then uh, and then pit it in. My understanding is the fuel thing is to level the playing field a little bit. Um, so the fastest cars can't just cruise to victory over the slower cars. But it's still... Whoa, there's a car stopped there on the bottom. It's so easy to do. I don't, don't really blame anybody that has trouble getting onto the track. But hopefully they practiced it. All right, I am going to pit this time. Yeah, it did wiggle a lot. It was a big wiggle. Oh, Wyans, thank you. Oh, man, a crash in front of me. Is, is this going to be, like, the most chaotic race of all time? It, it feels like it may be just, just by the uh, practice laps here. All right, this is a very slow pit entry. Not really going to help me, but, yeah, so I think my pit stall is all the way down here. we got cars exiting. Jim Neighbors is indeed singing his heart out at the moment. All right. I think that's it. I think that's the end of my testing for everything. All right. All right, I'm going to take a very quick break just to uh, make sure I make it all 200 laps today. So I'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, we qualified last week for folks that missed it. I got the Ed Carpenter shirt on today. I'm hoping that that does bring me good luck. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. Oh. <clears throat> Cosworth, I'm racing. I see a lot of conversation about the car. I'm driving a Cosworth uh, 87 March with a Cosworth engine. I hope it's exciting in good ways. 
But I appreciate folks being here. I got a lot of people in here today, which is so much fun. And uh, I, I really hope it's a good show, if nothing else. So, temperature of the car, 220 degrees Fahrenheit is the limit. I can't go over that if I expect to run the full race. These guys are really going at it down the front stretch. Um, so, 200 laps, uh, 220 degrees Fahrenheit oil temperature. So I have to stay under that. I will have a little bit of time up, up at the start of the first stint before the car really gets hot. And so I, I, we'll see what the start's like and how I feel with everything, but might, might try to use a little bit of extra boost off the line just to get into a good position. But I do have to be fairly conservative with the car's boost. And so we'll have to see what kind of pace I have. In, in practice, I'll be, you know, against the people that were out when I was racing, I felt like I was always passing people. But it's tough to tell who's on what strategy, how far into a stint they are, how much fuel they're running, what they're testing even. So I really have no idea how I'm going to do today. Um, but if I, can, if I can get away from the start, there's not a lot of chaos. No, like, weird, you know, things with the yellow flags and all that, then I feel fairly good about, about my chances. But we'll have to see. <laughs> That's why we're here. If I already knew how I was going to do it, it wouldn't be quite as fun. What button box? So this is a um, DSD. Derek Spear Designs, I'm fairly certain. It's really nice. It's very simple. I mean, there's nothing special. I know you can make your own uh, your own button boxes, um, but I'm not really I'm not a big electronics guy like that. So for me, buying one was was awesome, and um, they're very very nice. They have a billion different configurations for one, and I picked one that's got some rotary switches as well as some toggles and all that. So it's got a little bit of everything. The nicest thing about a button box is that no matter the sim you're in. Um, I'm just, like, is it gonna work? Yeah, it all works good. No matter the sim you're in, you can have your controls set up the same way. So, uh, it makes it easy to go from sim to sim or car to car without, you know, having to try to remember what the wheel is, is like or things like that. Yeah, DSD, if you're not gonna make your own and you're not into that type of thing, I think DSD makes really nice button boxes and they're, you know, they're, they're priced appropriately, but they're, you know, for what they are, I think they're pretty affordable. Um, so, I mean, I've never, never talked to them in any way, so it's just my, my own thoughts. It would be cool to get some push, push pull shifters. I did post a picture, or uh, push pull levers for the roll bars. Um, I did post a picture not too long ago. I found my, I've got a throttle quadrant for, uh, for flying sim stuff. And I found that, and I was like, can I mount that <laughs> on the rig somewhere so I can have, like, legitimate push-pull? But, yeah. For today, there'll just be some toggle switches. Hopefully they don't wear out or something. Alright, we're getting close to the start of this. <clears throat> Overall, always have to remember, it's a 500-mile race if we've got a crash at the very end of the, uh turn there. Ugh. Gary, thank you so much. The car company sponsored DNQ. So we're moving over to your team. <laughs> thank you for the, the sponsorship. Yeah, there were a couple DNQs. There's a few folks that did qualify that couldn't end up racing. The normal online stuff. But most, most of all, I mean, this is a dedicated group of folks. And uh, they do a lot of racing, so... Hopefully, uh, hopefully things go well here today, and, and for anybody looking for kind of authentic historic racing, I think the ISO League is a great one. Um, they do, they don't do the thing where you can kind of pick whatever car you want and, and customize it. It's you, they always race the real real entry. So in their Formula One seasons, they do you know the full grids for those seasons and, and the real cars and teams. So if you like that kind of thing where you maybe get an underpowered car and you have to do the best you can with it. Um, I know a lot of folks really like that, and this is a great league for that type of thing. All right. It's almost time. I can't remember if Automobilista has the uh, very loud... very loud guy that, that tells everybody to go to the grid or not. 
Yeah, so Prograwl Walrus, I can speak, brings up a good point. So most of the cars are running Cosworths. Uh, there's a couple Buicks in the field, and then there's some Chevy Ilmores. Those are the fastest cars. The Lola Chevy is, is probably the fastest car uh, in the field. <laughs> I can't hit the pace car, thankfully. Thankfully, I cannot hit the pace car today. <clears throat> All right, I think we're just about ready to do it. Two hundred and twenty degrees Fahrenheit sounds high, but I was assured that that is is kind of the max safe temperature. It's actually two twenty one. Don't tell anybody, but I'm gonna stay at two twenty to be safe. I did. I tried to do a full run the other night, and it was alone, so, you know, how much can you actually learn from that? But, uh, <laughs> I got to lap 180 and crashed, or 150-something and crashed, uh, which I think was owed to just me not paying attention so much. But, alright, let me... I don't know why it says two hours. Two hundred laps. There it is. All right, full fuel. We've got the setup loaded. I'm just gonna do it again. I'm too nervous. <laughs> it would be bad if the setup. The setup is so important in this. All right, going out to the track. All right, I'm gonna set the car up for my first pit stop. whole HUD disappeared and it says it's synchronizing the game, which is worrying. Hopefully things come back. I don't know what it's doing. It is easier to concentrate when it's a real thing. I don't know what it's doing. 30 seconds. I can't see anybody. I can't. The controls don't do anything. The game is still running, though. Okay, there we go. Whew. All right, boost all the way to low for the pace lap. I'm gonna set up my bars. I'm gonna go fairly neutral on both bars. So that means kind of uh, mid stiffness in the rear, a little bit over stiff in the front. It's always good to be a little stiffer in the front because worst case, you'll, you'll plow a little bit, which <laughs> can be scary, but we'll see. All right. Try not to stall the car on the line and uh, stay caught up to the pack, I've been told. Yeah, remember to breathe, of course. And I do have to remember this is this lap here is going to be hurting my uh, fuel save a little bit. my fuel pace and everything just because I have to do this out lap. I'm on low boost, which doesn't really actually do much because I'm not uh, not going full throttle. We've got MO's car on the outside. I can put on driver labels for folks that uh, want them. I don't... might be distracting a bit. Really packed up there. I got uh, Yuha Boss in front of me. Brian Yannick's on the pole with uh, Alan Hackman. Or Adam Hackman, sorry. Alongside of him. And Jason White, one of the league admins, is uh, in Emmo's car to the right there. Oh, yeah. Pre-race nerves is a uh, very, very normal thing. More excitement. More I want to make sure I get into the race a bit and not, uh, not have some kind of silly crash right at the start. All right. Putting the boost back up. Yeah, I'll use labels here and there just to see who folks are if I'm really battling with somebody. All right, coming through turn four. Here we go. So this is it. Indy 500. I really hope this is a good race. I appreciate everybody watching. Regardless of what happens, try to have fun with it. That's the whole reason I'm doing it is just for some fun. So we'll come out of turn number four. And we'll come to the line. Give it a start. Just waiting to watch the leader up there. Brian Yannick on the pole. Just 
waiting a long time. He doesn't want to pass the pace car. Green flags out. And away we go. Oh my god, being overtaken on both sides. All right. Come down into turn number one, right against the white line on the inside. That was insane. I don't know what we're doing there, but we got a few folks that uh, are going to try to win it right away, I guess. Got away. Got away through the first corner. That's good. Get onto the back stretch. Up to fifth gear. Got a slower car here in front. It's Adam. Pass him quite easily. Up the inside. Come down to turn number three. Just put it in nice and easy. That was wild. <laughs> if, I, if I get to the end and we rewatch any of the race, I definitely want to watch the start. Car is very, very twitchy. Just change some of the bars a little bit. 205 water temp, running full boost at the moment. We'll probably crank it down as we get to the back stretch. We've got Yuha Boss right in front of me. Yeah, there's a long race to go. I don't. I wouldn't have done that, but they got away with it, so. I guess it could have went worse. Alright, gaining on Yuha here a bit. riding uh, Kevin Kogan's car. I could have forced the issue there, but I'm not too worried about it. If, I, uh, if I'm faster than him, I'll get around him. We've got so much time. Wow. What's going on here? Rear of the car is super slidy. Got into turn one. Let's me by. I really parked it in. <laughs> that was nice of him, actually. Oh my god, thank you, Harold. We got somebody coming up behind. I think it might be Jason or Oscar. Alright, I'm gonna have to start going down on some of the boost here just to make sure we don't overheat. Car felt really, really twitchy last time through three and four. I'm a bit scared of it at the moment. Just trying to build the confidence. Got somebody coming up behind me now. It's got to sort itself out race pace wise. You know, who knows where folks are on total pace and how fast they'll be able to go and, and all of this. It's got Fredrickson in front of me and uh, Oscar behind. All right. I just want to be clean. I don't want to run wide on, on laps. I want to make sure I'm a. Nice steady line. It'll be harder to get around if I don't blow corners at all. All right, settle in. Try to get a pace going. Man, that's intense. That start was insane. We're on lap four, coming to lap five. I'm burning 1.3 gallons a lap. So my fuel number is 1.31, and so I'm actually burning a little less fuel than I, I need to, which is good. If I can stretch it, that's just going to pay off at the end of the race. I can, I can stretch some of my stints a bit longer, and uh, my final stops can be a little bit shorter. But I need to make it to lap 31 on stint number one here to uh, stick to my strategy. And I hope everybody is enjoying it so far. I have not read a single message <laughs> outside of that one super chat. It's a little hot coming into turn three. We're good, though. Yeah, I haven't seen any chaos yet, but I'm sure there's been a little bit out back if it was any indication up front here. All right, car on the apron here in front, but should be fine. I don't know why I'm stepping on the brake right now. I do not need to do that. Got to get in a groove here. Oscar coming up behind me. So there's three cars in front. Grant Riddle up front with Jacob Fredrickson and Brian Yannick. And then uh, I'm in fourth right now. Stepping on the brakes again. <laughs> All right. Nothing can prepare you for doing it. It's just, you get in the race, and then it's a totally different thing. The car feels different. I think it's a lot to do with 
like your heart rate and just general how you what you're thinking about all right I want to try to get a little gap on Oscar here he's been quite close to me but I don't know if he's got a uh, got more speed or he's saving fuel or what the deal is so let's see if I can pull out just a bit I feel like I have so much more speed going into the corners for some reason. I don't know if I do or if it's just my perception is weird. You know what a funny thing is? I did all of my testing with empty grandstands and it I think that visually is throwing me off a little bit too. It just looks, the whole track looks different than every single lap of testing I've done up to this point. Yeah, I assume, you know, I assume everybody's worked out some kind of strategy and they know what they can do with their car, especially cars up front. We got one car retired. Yeah, that's what just came across the screen, Bouchard, the DNF. But I know my, my strategy and I'm, I'm on it right now, so I got to make it to lap 31 in this first stint if I... Uh, I'm going to stick to what I laid out for myself. I have a little bit of play in it, so if I if I can't quite make it there, I do have some backups. I think I might be gaining just slightly on the car in front. All right, I think we're getting to some of the first traffic. So this is where stuff's going to get really frightening. I have a, a feeling the first time it's through the lap traffic will be uncomfortable in spots, but just try my best here. Don't take any risks. It's not worth it at this point. We're 10 laps in. Just be uh, assertive, but not too over-aggressive with moves. Car kind of halfway up the track. You have to spot the slower cars. is isn't always... Easy. Moves out of the way, maybe. Got a massive run on the car in front here. He's closing up to the outside. What are, what are we doing? Around the long way. Man, that was that was very sketchy for uh, not a lot of reason, I don't think. All right, made it through, though. It's probably the first of a many, many sketchy, sketchy corners. a ton of time to third place there but I don't know what I could have done the car just faded up directly into, into the front of me the low side I think that's April or Angel all right Oscar's right on me from behind I'm holding up I got a little train up behind me. Who's that? Is that Jason? It's Ray. I was following Ray in some of the practice right before I started streaming and he had a very good pace so I think he'll be one to contend with. In case you're wondering, cannot hit the apron. The apron is very flat on this version of the track, and uh, it's very difficult to save the car if you touch it, so really don't want to go below the uh, white line if you can avoid it. All right, I did go up on the boost there for a second just to just to get away from the two behind, but gone back down now. Great 
Grafting would be good, but I've not been able to keep up with the few in front. I was thinking I might... One, one strategy in my mind was that I was going to maybe be behind somebody and uh, save a lot of fuel and really shorten the end of the race, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. All right, I'm averaging 1.29 gallons, which is under the number, which is good. So I'm saving a little extra fuel. If I can go an extra lap, that's just going to be one, one gallon, basically, I don't need to take on my last stop. Yeah, drifting is not as big in, in the race as it was in qualifying. Alright, for some reason my pit stop was requested, but I'm def definitely not pitting right now. Yeah, no, I'm 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 not worried about the guys up front. I mean, if they're if they're able to run a pace like that for the whole race and it works out strategy-wise, I was never going to beat them. So I'm not worried about it too much. But we'll see how it plays out. I I don't I don't think you can run quali laps for 500 miles in any car. But I'm, I'm right on my strategy right now. There's a couple bad laps with the lap traffic there, but um, that's going to happen to everybody at various points. So as long as, as long as I just stay with it. Yeah, if anybody's wondering why there's a lot of lifting or I can't just run flat out, the oil temperature, that big number you see in the center of the dashboard, 211, 12 degrees Fahrenheit, that's the oil temp. And I have to keep it under 220 degrees to safely, you know, get get to the end of the race. And even then, it's not guaranteed, but I'll have a better chance of doing it. We'll pass this lap car down low, run it deep into the corner, a little bit of brakes just to make it safe. Slide up. There we go. But, yeah, you have to balance your boost. You have to balance the gear ratios everything to uh to make sure that you're not going to overheat and blow the engine even then it's still possible to have a failure in the car these cars are not perfect um but you'll have a lot better success of finishing the race if you uh if you don't overheat or over rev that's the other way mostly we'll just be coming out of the pits i gotta make sure i don't hit the rev limiter oh angel may's out of the race she had a crash something happened to the car This mod's available on Race Department for folks that are interested in it. It's great fun. It doesn't... The offline with AI is not not the best. Um, but that, you know, that's not necessarily anything the mod developers could do. All right, this is good so far. I'm feeling a little less jittery. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I had a death grip on the wheel for the first 10 laps or so. It was a big... Ooh, as I say this, we got a bunch of smoke, cars spinning to the inside, days of thunder, come through the smoke, I stayed in it. I don't know if we'll get a yellow. I think they're only going to throw yellows for big multi-car crashes. Uh, because the yellows in AMS1 are a little buggy and just it's, it's easy to get a black flag for breaking a rule when you really didn't do anything wrong but i've got company now ray's right behind me i can't really go any faster than i'm going right now the car's oversteering a little bit i'm going to loop, uh, lower the rear bar a bit more it's already almost maxed out what's going on man i'm a much lower on the rear bar than i was in a lot of my testing the car just feels much looser. Yeah, I just based off the... I watched some of the older races that this league has done, and it seems like it's only if there's two or three cars in a wreck and it's blocking the track and stuff that they'll throw a yellow. So, I mean, they could do it for whenever they want, but 
I think they try to keep it to a minimum just to avoid the chaos that <laughs> will go, uh, come from it. All right, lap 20. It says I've got 11 more laps, so I'm right on the money with the uh, with the strategy. I'm going to make it right to lap 31. Yeah, maybe the track temp is higher. That's a good thought. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, don't know what my tire temperatures are supposed to be. It's one of those things I didn't test quite enough. All right, closing up on this car in front. I'm going to have to time it a bit better here. Let off a bit earlier. Oh, we got another car crashed. Oh my god. There's going to be nobody left by lap 100. Alright. Got a nice pass there. On a lapped car. Roy, if Ray wanted to pass me, I think he would try, so I don't know if he's saving fuel. But yeah, I'm a bit worried, because if the car starts getting a lot more oversteery than this, I can handle it right now, but if it starts getting more oversteery, I've got nothing left in, uh, in the bars to fix it. We'll see what happens here. 8.2 seconds off the lead. I'd love to stay on the lead lap, obviously, just in case there is a yellow. All right, we're getting into some thicker traffic now, though. This is going to be interesting. It's a big pack of cars in front of me here, which is which is a little scary. One car, car out real wide. Just keeping an eye on Ray behind me as well. If he dives it in, I gotta be ready for that. have a bit of an advantage on me here because I'm basically forging the line for us to get through all this lap traffic. Yeah, I'm not worried. If he gets around me, if he puts it in a spot where he can pass and he does it, then he'll, he'll have it. It's fine. There's so much race to go. If he thinks he has somewhere to be and I'm not invited, then he can go there. a few of those guys back to nine seconds off the leader so Jacob Fredrickson is uh, is up front hey if I can't win I'll have another Jacob win as this car in front of me slides super wide oh my god I got super out of it there I thought he was going to crash alright thank you Poser glad it's entertaining it's a little, <laughs> little nerve wracking at the moment um, but just try to stay with it here. Still in the first stint of the race. There's so much race to go. It would just be, be silly to lose it now. Yes, Sam, that's the idea. Right, I'm actually a little low on temp, so I can, I'm going to notch it up another boost level. When I dare to take my hand off the steering wheel, to so change my FOV instead. I don't know why I have the, <laughs> I don't know why I've got that map to a button. All right, I think this is that car that moves the last time I passed.
Yeah, we're only about five laps away from pit stops, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be chaos a bit. Oh, the car in front goes so wide there. Yeah, we're doing really, really well on fuel. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get an extra lap, though. It's, it's kind of funny. When saving fuel, you think you're, you're doing really good because you're saving a few, you know, hundredths of a gallon a lap or something like that. But if you can't make up enough fuel to go an extra lap, it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> you just left something on the table. All right, I've got five gallons of fuel left. I need at least 1.3 gallons to be safe to get around a lap. The car does start stuttering a bit on like 0.2 gallons of fuel, so I'd like to not leave it to the bare minimum, but I need to make it to lap 31. Fuel lights on. Comes on at 3.8 gallons. I don't know why. Right at the top of the temperature range. Gonna throttle back just a little bit to make sure I don't overheat. I put the boost down a notch. Last couple laps before you pit, you've got a little extra speed just because the car is so light. And uh, that's what happens. I set the fastest lap. <laughs> Two point seven gallons. Should be able to make it one more lap after this. All right, one more lap. Got to remember how to downshift now. Come to the pits. Okay. Mentally prepare myself here for the first pit stop. It is. I have to expect that there's going to be cars on the road. I need to be a, a bit easier than I'd like to be coming in the pits. 1.7 gallons. Got just enough to go one more lap here. Request my stop. Although I don't know if that matters. We're going to be filling it all the way. Taking three tires. I'll explain that more after the pit stop. But hopefully uh, Ray here behind me, if he's pitting... I wish I could wave to him <laughs> to tell him I'm pitting, but uh, hopefully if he's pitting, we don't get into a little fender bender or anything. All right, here we go. Oh, car in front of me is pitting as well. All right, I'm just going to be careful here. Get it down to fourth gear. It's It would be nice to fly down the pits, but if there's other cars coming in and out. This is where things can get awfully uh, precarious come down to first for the pit stall oh my god I made it in made it in I think I led a lap too all right the car behind me is like nosed in behind me all right we'll wait till we get full of fuel and then we get to exit oh, I hit the rev limiter just slightly all right, nice and easy coming out of the pits. Just got to be careful here. So I predicted 35 second pit stops and it uh, looks like I might actually exceed that. About 35 seconds, so I'm right on the money with it. Right on the money with it. Clear track mostly as well, a few cars up the road. Now I just gotta feel it out. Full fuel is so much different. I might need to raise the rear bar because I have it at super soft, but if anything, it's gonna understeer right now. So it's a, always better to understeer than be in an oversteer condition. That was very anxiety inducing. I've just lucked out there that nobody was, uh, was coming when I was pulling out or pulling in. <laughs> that felt sketchy. Bit too hard into the corner there to uh, try to sneak under the car in front. 
All right, so it seems like Ray is still behind me. I'm, I've cycled out right where I left the track in fourth position. I'm 10.5 seconds off the lead. And uh, I just need to try to get the car up to speed as well as I can. It's easy to lose a lot of time on these first few laps after the pits because your car's cold tires. Cold tires, full fuel. It's, it just feels so lumbering compared to what it was just like. Uh, if you're looking for a place to gain a few seconds in your stints, figure out the first few laps after you come out. Right. Always, I don't quite like when the cars pull out of the way like that. It kind of leaves it on them to, uh, to time it. It does feel very foreign speeding in the pit lane like that, doesn't it? All right, so we're on stint two now. I need to make it to lap 60, uh, 62 or better. Which should be easier to do this time because we're not doing the pace lap. Probably won't be boosting it higher than it needs to go. This is when we start to get into the longer part of the race. There's still quite a lot of cars in the race, though. So it is uh, certainly still plenty of chaos to come. Appreciate everybody watching. Very cool to have so many folks in, in here today. This probably is my most viewed stream <laughs> ever, which is cool. Welcome if you're just finding this and have no idea what we're doing. This is an online Indy 500. 1987 version. All of the other cars you're seeing are real real drivers, and uh, we all have cars which are actually taking part in that race. Got these two in front going side by side. Should be able to sneak below this one. Get past one of the lap cars. I think I'm actually right behind Brian now. Just boost it up just a little bit. One, one scotch of uh, boost. Is this Brian? Who is this in front of me? It might be Jason, actually. I recognize the car, but I think it's actually a lapper. Whoa, right to the white line there. Got to be careful. You don't want to go on the apron. Some of these moves, they're really pulling the car out side to side and stuff. I need to get around these two. So this is what happens. You start catching up to cars, which are a lap down, but they're not slow. And uh, you need to be a little more aggressive in getting around them. So we'll get underneath Rick Mayer's machine there. MO's Patrick Racing car in front. And kind of sliding out wide. Stay on the low side here. Hopefully can now drag them down the straight. There we go. All right, past those two. It's a little awkward. Yeah, there is arrow push. You have to be careful behind other other cars. For setup folks that like car setups and stuff, I'm actually running less downforce than I did in qualifying, which surprised me at first. But because I'm running a much lower speed generally, more downforce just slows the car down. So I'm actually running a couple degrees less wings than I did during qualifying, which was not intuitive to me at all. It's very much different than these days. Got okay, one car running out wide here. Ugh. Give me the gap there. Trying to, trying to make up as much space, uh, pace as I can when 
passing cars, trying to time it better. I'm definitely, I wish I could have practiced traffic running a bit more. I'm, I'm just not quite sure enough how to, uh, how to get the cars through traffic in a good way. But I'm sure I'll learn here today. Oh, I stepped out a lot there. I don't have anything I can do with the bars, unfortunately. The car is just kind of what, where it is right now. Uh, did Jason hit the wall? Thank you, Jake Petrolhead. Appreciate that. Yeah, we're 100 miles in. It's flying by. I knew this race was going to go fast today. Just because you're so in it. Stints will fly by. Already on stint number two here. And uh, trying to make it to lap 62 at least on fuel. And if I can go even further, that'll just mean a little less fuel in my final pit stops. You can fix a lot of damage on these cars, but it takes a lot of time. Even a, a small tap to the wall, if you hurt the suspension, it can take a minute, two minutes to fix in the pits. So you're really out of it at that point. I mean, certainly continue around and try to finish where you can, but... Oh, we got another car out, Max. Maximilian's out. So, so far, no yellow flags. I wonder if we'll get any, just because the, the caution proceedings... If you weren't here earlier when we were talking through it, to, to take yellow flags in AMS-1, there's just a bit of trickery that you have to do to make sure you don't get black flagged and stuff. So I think they want to avoid it unless absolute chaos happens. And we've seen plenty of single car spins and all that. Oh, Davon, thank you. Thank you very much for, for the uh, support. Yeah, tire temps are fine. But uh, they're, they're really only going to throw yellows if there's two or three cars involved in a crash, I believe. So I just made a slight adjustment to go up on the rear bar just to, to help get it to not understeer quite as much as this left car get bogged down just a little bit there, but I'll sneak around him. Now, I calculated out, so we've been talking um, talking a little bit before the race about strategies. I calculated out a five-stop race, which is possible to do, but because of the savings required and, and the lap times I'm able to do with that, I would lose about two minutes over the course of a full green flag race if I did a five-stop versus a six-stop. So it's much better, much better to uh, for me in my pace and my setup to be doing a six-stop race. Oh, yeah the tires thing so I did a bunch of testing with pit stops and timing and things and I believe because the code I don't actually know why it works this way but the, the crew does not change all four tires at the same time for this mod they uh, they change the two right tires and then the two left tires so you actually save time by not taking four tires you save um, five seconds not changing the left front tire uh, not changing the left rear tire, you only save an additional one second, so it's not really worth it, and the car handles much worse like that. Yeah. So I'm losing time to the leader. The leader, Jacob Fredrickson, has, has got a pace going. Well, still a long ways to go. I'm not going to worry about it. I think I'm actually catching Brian in front of me, which would get me up into the podium. The Indianapolis podium, I know. <laughs> it's such a coveted place to be. Oh my gosh. I can't see who sent that super chat because it's so long, it doesn't fit on my screen, but I, I very much appreciate that. Oh, Emil. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's super nice of you. Thank you very much. And glad, glad to provide some entertainment. That's not the uh, the Nurburgring, although that looks like it was kind of fun, but also chaos, similar to this today. A 
you weren't here for the very start of the race, I had two cars overtake me on both sides. And it was uh, a bit of a hold your breath moment heading down into the first corner, but it all worked out somehow. It was very, very nearly a bad, bad place to be. Understeering a little bit there. So I think I was hoping this would happen actually. I think the car is going to start understeering a little bit because of the, the left front tire being worn out. Come up the inside of this white car here. Just got to grab a little bit of brake to uh, make sure I stick to the bottom. Another car out of the race, Aaron Curtis. Right, we're going to slipstream on this car in front here. Floating. Sometimes you feel like you're floating in these cars. In a very scary way. Another car out. Oscar. Oh, Oscar, who was right behind me towards the start of the race. And Ray as well. I see Ray's DNF down the board. Something happened. Something happened. A little wing. I see a wing on the track. I think I, think I know what that's from then. Well, that takes out one of my main competition here for this for this top five. Got Yuha Boss behind me now. I see a slow car down the end of the straight here. Hopefully they can keep it on the apron. It's the uh, Shearson racing car. No rear wing. It is hard to drive these cars. It probably has suspension damage as well. I, uh, I tried that out totally on purpose a few times in uh, in testing and it's, it's almost worth packing it up. Pringle, thank you. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorely behind on my rally practice, Kringle, just because of all this. I haven't even really started yet, so that'll be this week. <laughs> I know, all you folks are being very kind today. A long race to go here. We're just nearing quarter distance. Just nearing one quarter Another car out, Dana. All right, it's starting. A lot of folks, I think, had that mindset of making it to the first pit stop because I think we only saw one or two DNFs, and now there's there's been a whole string of them here. It's going to make the track feel a bit more open, which I'll be happy about, but got another slow car here on the low side. Right, I'm going to set up my pit stop. It's still, still got about a half a stint to go before the stop, but just want to set things up. Oh, this car in front's very wide. 23 cars, so we're down a third of the field, essentially, at this point. Car in front on the low side. I hope he saw me. I'm always worried they didn't see you. He looks like he did. Car feels spectacular right now. I think I'm just getting a little more comfortable as well. The race is starting to even out. Just a little bit here. Cars are starting to uh, to run in, in good pace as everybody feels a little more comfortable. In front's wagging a little bit. I don't know if he hit the wall there. All right, I'm only a couple seconds off of uh, Brian here. Chasing down third position. We're just past one quarter. We got a car crashed, I think. Oh, on the inside. I don't know who that was. Alan? Another crash. Man. Yuha's about eight seconds behind me, almost nine seconds. Yeah, and I'm slowly catching Brian here, so things are going in a good direction. I'm making my fuel numbers. We've got 11 laps before stopping, which is actually I'm going to go at this point. I'm going to go a lap longer to 63, which is good. On this next stop, 
I was playing around. I did do some testing to uh, to do triple stints on one tire on the left front, but I don't I don't want to push anything this early. It's only going to gain me. But it is going to gain like five seconds. Jason's out. Oh no. Jason's now out of the race. We got a little pack here, which is making me a bit nervous, but that might be why I was catching Jason so much as well, or uh, Brian. Got this pack of cars in front. Everybody plays it cool here. These two side by side, man. This is sketchy. Try to blow past a couple cars here. Got one of them. Definitely quicker than this car in front, but got to be a little bit closer to, to make a lunge. I was a little closer than I wanted it to be, but I squeaked in there. I just don't want to lose too much time. That was a bit more aggressive than I should be, really. Uh, appreciate their cooperation. I'm not sure who that was, but they definitely uh, gave me a little extra space there. Alright, I just increased the boost. I think I'm a little low on uh, the old power. Starting to oversteer quite a lot. I'm gonna lower that rear bar again. I'm I'm almost maxed out on the uh, on the bar. Which isn't good. I was it must be the temperatures in the track today, and if I was a little more savvy I could probably change my tire pressures and fix that, but I'm not savvy enough. Alright. <laughs> Should have worn gloves maybe. Go back down the boost right at the top of the uh temperature here. I think I've kept it under 220 the whole time. This might be Brian in front of me. I think he's in the red car there. Alright, 8.9 gallons. in a lot of this car directly in front of me. I'm going to get a little bit of that arrow wash. Really ringing it out through the corners. Bit of a run. Uh, I don't have the temperature oh, side by side. I backed out because I uh, I was hitting 220, and now we've made it very awkward for each other. But thankfully, I get the spot. That was very very courteous. I probably should have just let it go over the temp there. That wasn't the smartest idea. Yeah, I'm just about hitting 220 at the end of every straight, so I'm right I'm right on the number for my temp. So we're talking about the oil temperature for folks that maybe have jumped in since the start of the race. It's the big number that's right in the center of my dashboard, the, uh, the LCD number there. And I need to keep the car under 220 degrees Fahrenheit if I hope to make the full race. You can do a few laps above that. You know, we did qualifying. I was, I think, in the 230s, almost 240. So the car would stick together, but 
maybe you know if you're battling for a position in the last couple of laps, that's the time to risk it, type of thing. Battling for the win, but this early in the race, you definitely want to preserve the car. So, got to get to the end before I have any shot to uh, to do anything crazy there. So we're just hitting lap 60. I should pit in the next three laps. I got 3.9 laps of fuel. Ugh, very close to almost making it four. See what it looks like as I come around. The lap traffic here. So I think this is uh, Brian right in front of me. Or he might be the red car a little bit further up. I'm not sure. All right. Car's coming in the pits now. Oh, he's really booking it in. I've got a few laps of fuel here, which is good. I mean, the further I can go, I don't think I don't think we're going to be stopping a different number of times as it goes right now. But I'll be able to short fill, which will definitely save some time. So I'm up to second right now behind Grant. Two point three point two gallons. Well, these two in front, side by side with each other. seven gallons I might have two more laps in it we'll see what it looks like coming around next time all right cars exiting hoping uh, hoping everybody's good and stays on the apron here there we go nice pass Rick Mears Penske there it's an 86 model Penske. Penske abandoned their custom cars for this race. Danny Sullivan actually qualified with the Penske chassis and realized that... I've got one more lap in it. I've got one more lap. All right. They realized that the car itself, although it qualified, was going to be a little too slow. So they actually uh, pulled, pulled the car from the race, which is crazy to do, especially with, with what... Uh, happened to Penske and you know, eight years later in 95 but he requalified with an 86 model all right so we're gonna take four tires full fuel pitting in this lap I don't have much fuel left I might actually get a sputter here coming into the pit lane but we'll take it nice and easy there could be cars entering and exiting along with me or alongside of me so I need to be really careful here stay well clear of this car in front I'm pitting Get it down into fourth a little early because I can see a ton of cars in the pits. There's no speed limit. Right. I'm very slow, but what can you do? It's just very risky to uh, to get it in and risk hitting somebody. All right. We just about ran it out of fuel there, but I'm on lap 64 now. A little slow on the getaway there. All right, just concentrate on getting back out onto the track as fast as I can. <laughs> Not tea today; it's water. But I've uh, can didn't drink too much water this morning for obvious reasons. So just want to make sure we last the whole race. All right, back out on the track. One car coming up behind me, but. Might be able to stay in front of him here as he'll fade into turn three. Just be really careful. The car's very heavy now compared to what it was. But four new tires, four fresh ones. Oh, we got a car in the apron there. I think that's one of those lapped cars I've passed a couple times. All right, 38. I was a little slow in that whole stop sequence. 35 or 38.6 seconds lost that lap. Aiming for 35 second pit stops. Up to third position though. I'm up to third. So I, I passed Brian somehow through all of that. 
and it's legitimate because oh, that car is sweat blow. <laughs> Grant is in a Jacob sandwich, you're right. Alright, lap 65. So I need to make it... My pit stop originally was supposed to be lap 93, but I think I'm going to be well beyond that. So we'll see where I end up. Pass this uh, slower car here to the right. Really compromise turn two, but stand on it. Let's crank it one, one notch up in the boost. So I see a car right in my mirror who's gaining a little bit. Not sure who that is. too much worry. It's not for position, so it could be a, a car that had some trouble but is on the end of their stint now, so they're fast on light fuel. You can see how much time I'm losing per lap here. The car is just really slow. Alright, back down on boost a little bit, right at the top of the yellow uh, temperature range. Understeer a lot there. It's the first time I'm getting understeer this race. So this stint should take us just under halfway. It's understeer again there. It's a big lift. All right, we're going stiff, much stiffer on the rear. Anytime you make a bar change, you then worry in the next corner it's going to do something evil to you. But I've, I've remembered a few different positions that seem to work well in testing. So hopefully we... Uh, Hopefully I can fix the car here a little bit. It'll it'll change quite soon. Once you get around 30 gallons of fuel, it's uh it, it behaves much differently. It's a little wide through turn one there. Alright, so working originally plan plan was to get to lap. 93 and fill it again to full that would be the final time that I fill it to full tanks in this race uh, and I'm actually doing better on fuel than I thought I was going to do so might be able to s skip a couple gallons on, on the fourth stop and, uh, and see what that can do for my pace it, it doesn't sound like a lot taking you know a couple gallons less but if you gain a second in the pits that's a second <laughs> it's a long time on the track so anything you can do to gain some time in the race is is important i i have a feeling we're not going to get a yellow flag today knock on wood at this point kind of hope we don't personally you know probably some of you would be interested in that but seems like this one might play out naturally so we'll see Yellows are manual for uh, for this. They they pretty much don't throw them for single car crashes because the yellow system in AMS one isn't really built to do oval racing. Catch a couple lap cars here.
I'm going down a little bit on the rear bars. The car's starting to feel more neutral again, and uh, you don't want it to surprise you. It's a little narrow there on the on the turn in for three. Yeah, it's starting to get oversteery again. That's good. Maybe the track's rubbering up to a point where it's going to feel a little bit more like testing. Yeah, the number in the middle of the dash is the oil temperature. I know it's a little confusing because it's not, especially with Fahrenheit, it's not too different from the speed. But it's uh, it's telling me my oil temperature in Fahrenheit, and uh, I have to keep that under 220, basically, to, to make sure I'm not damaging the engine. there all right I was testing some lines like the uh, the they call it the Rick Mears line or the Elio line that they run where you don't actually apex the corner all the way because you can keep your speed up if you run like a half a lane up and uh, it actually kind of works it's really tricky to do but especially with a lower boost setting where you don't have enough oomph to really goose it out of the corner you uh, Side by side with the car, which is always fun. Slide in front of him. Yeah. I think that's Jose Garza's machine. But yeah, if you if you're running a low boost, so you don't have as much engine torque to like really accelerate out of the corners, it can actually be helpful to uh, to stay a little bit higher and keep your speed up rather than really apexing. But overall, more comfortable with apexing the corner. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing with. Yeah, we should be good. I've, I've done extensive testing with the uh, temperatures, and I mean, something could always fail because there are random failures in this, which is, which is always fun, but um, it would not be, at this stage, it would not be because of something I've done to the car. I'm pretty, pretty confident about that. Yeah, oomph. That's the metric. Oomph is the metric uh, phrase for it, I'm pretty sure. All right, so I'm sitting in third position. I'm about six, seven seconds off of Grant for second, and then I'm 27 seconds off the lead. Jacob Fredrickson is in a league of his own today. He's got an amazing pace so far, so we'll have to see how it shakes out, but I might be seeing him in my rear view in the not-too-distant future. He's got about another 15 seconds or so, and he's going to catch me. Yeah, and if, if anybody was doubting it, Indy cars are absolutely pretty fast. <laughs> They're very fast. Especially if you think that this was 1987, and we actually did slower speeds in qualifying than the real cars did. I think the pole was like a 215, 215 mile per hour average. I think I qualified just under 210. In 1987, with essentially aluminum cars, Some uh, real cowboy stuff. Whew. All right. Oh my gosh! Don't start with me with the oversteer, understeer, loose, tight thing. I, uh, I just went down quite a lot in the rear bar because I was feeling the car was very neutral. When I say neutral, it means it turns very easily to a point where if it turned just a scotch more, which is another technical term, if it turns just a little bit more, it would uh, it would oversteer, it would overturn, or go loose. So you kind of have to be afraid, if, unless you have utmost confidence in what you're doing, when the car gets neutral, I tend to dial it back to a little bit of understeer. I always want the car to be understeering just a slight amount. That way I'm confident in what, what the car is doing or what it's going to do when I go into the corner. If I catch a lapped car, I don't have to worry that I have to yank the wheel a bit more. I've got a little extra in it. Slower though, you know, I could go a little faster probably if I was a little more daring, but we are uh, not even halfway yet. Right, I've got about 17 laps on 
on this stint to go. I'm currently one lap to the good on my strategy, which is great. I don't imagine that's going to change. Unless we get a yellow flag. That means... A couple more laps. If the yellow came out, I could pit and still make it fine to the end. See, I add a little bit of throttle as soon as the car gets turned in. I might lift off coming into turn one or turn three, but I add a little bit more throttle as soon as I know it's going to turn in. And that's actually to stabilize the car. The car is just a lot more stable on the throttle than it is when you're just totally off of it. So I'm not really trying to accelerate. I'm just giving it a tiny bit of throttle. It's this car in front, I think, just nicked the wall ever so slightly. Scoop below. Lost a bit of time there, half second. Right. Knock on wood, but things have calmed down a little bit, it seems. So, um, I think everybody's in the groove now, settling in for the long, long part of the race. This middle, middle bit is always the long part when you do these 500 milers get all excited about the start and the end will always be exciting but those stints three four five are just achingly long sometimes Lost some time to Grant during this stint, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure we're all on the same type of strategy. I could be. I think I'm going a slightly longer than everybody else, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it equals out. I'm impressed with Jacob Fredrickson's pace. I just don't know how how I could do that and not overheat the car or run out of fuel. I haven't mentioned it too many times, but you do have a maximum of, this is a league rule, it's not a real rule, but a league rule of 277 gallons of fuel for the whole race. It's about a thousand liters, I believe, of fuel. And uh, I believe that is to level the playing field a little bit, because there's a few cars that could just burn a lot more fuel and be way faster than everybody else. Uh, I don't have any risk of, I'm going to be probably in the 260s with fuel when we get to the end of the race. So I'm not worried about it from, from my end, but I can't believe Jake, Jacob can go that fast with staying under the temperature and under the fuel. So we'll have to see if his car survives. Does anybody know what car Fredrickson's in? Yeah, I think Porsche were the first ones to bring an all-carbon fiber car to the 1990 season, and they it was originally not allowed, believe it or not. Just got a little loose there. Yeah, the fuel limit thing is interesting. Originally, when I saw that, I was a bit disappointed, so I was thinking it might take some of the strategy out, but it doesn't affect my pace, at least with what I 
calculated and everything, I, I don't have any issues with it. So I have to assume some of the other cars, you just have a lot more fueling options than, uh, than I do with the March Cosworth. He's in a Buick, huh? Not famous for their reliability, the Buicks. Gotta go down on the turbo boost just a little bit because of the uh, the temps here creeping up right to the to the limit. Now the engine wouldn't just go pop if I hit 220, but if I did that for a, you know 10, 15 laps, it might. Whoa, that was very very loose. All right, let me look at the bars here. Had a bit of a snap oversteer mid corner, which is never good. Softened it up a little bit. I'm pretty much at the full extent of the bars and all that. A little easier. I'm gonna set up my next pit stop. So I am gonna skip taking a tire again on this next one. Just to save those five seconds. Yeah, I think it was purely a safety thing for the uh, for the carbon fiber thing. They were able to fix it. Indy, by Indy, I think they were running that chassis, so. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> it's going pretty well so far. i got to keep an eye on Brian behind me, but uh, Grant's got a little more pace than me. Jacob's got a heck of a lot more pace than me. Got about 10 more seconds, he's gonna come up behind me. Just double stinting the left front. Not the not all four. But I save about five seconds in the pits doing that, and it doesn't it really doesn't change the behavior of the car enough to to make it a big deal. So it's totally worth doing. Gotta see a car in the pits up front. Interesting time to be pitting, lap 89. Yeah, if you see, I don't know if you can see it because it's probably very small on the screen, but in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner, I've got my tire gauges on. I'm running quite a bit of HUD in this compared to what I usually do, but. For something this competitive, you, you need it. Um, just imagine you'd have somebody on a pit box with all this information. Maybe not in 1987, but... But yeah, if you look at the tire wear, it cycles through, and it, I think the left front's only going to be like 85% at the end of the stint. So, we've got plenty of life left in it. I've triple stinted it without much of an issue, so I feel, feel very confident I can double stint them. I think Grant might be catching Jacob a bit, or maybe we both are. I think he might be pitting. All right, Jacob Fredrickson's in the pits. So if he's pitting now, lap 90, he's on the same strategy as me. He's just not going to short stint at the end. So. We'll have to see if that makes a difference. I mean, 30 seconds, he's out front of me. That's a lot of time to make up. I've got a whole bunch of lap cars in front of me now. It's going to get interesting. <laughs> PJ, I'm, I'm doing really, really well on fuel mileage, actually. Oh, other Jacob. That makes sense. I was going to say, PJ's always saying good things in the chat. Yeah, you can stretch it to 33 laps, but I'm on a six-stop race because uh, I would lose... <clears throat> I calculated it out. I would lose about two minutes over the course of the race if I tried to do a five-stopper just because of the saving and how much slower you have to go. All right, five gallons of fuel left. Oh, this is a lot, of, a lot of cars in front of me. 
I don't like this car, the uh, red, white, and blue car there. I think that's is that Brayton's car or the Dick Simon car. It keeps pulling out of the way, which is not ideal. I would, uh, That second to think about it there. Oh, what are we doing? We go three wide in front. Backed out of that so hard. No, thank you. Losing a lot of time here, but I don't know what else I can do. I think that's Yuha that I just passed there. Point seven gallons. Should have one more lap in it. I'm I am like a couple laps to the good right now on my fuel. So this will be my last full fuel stop. Point eight gallons coming in next time. A lot of cars coming in and out right now. I hope it's a little bit nicer next time through. We will request the pit stop. It's coming to the end of the third stint. Yeah, that's one of those things. It would have been a little too early for me to pit on lap 90, but I did lose a few seconds through that traffic, so although I'm now going to gain some seconds because my funny tire strategy, you got to weigh all these options with you. All right, we'll come in then and uh, hope for more success. No speed limits. Down to third gear, down to second. One car in its stall there. Rock the left front. Ooh, that's not good because I'm not I'm not changing that one. All right. Good so far. We're deep in the race now. That was a weird little hop on my car. I don't know what that was about. Almost stalled it. Get it out of the pits though. Right, just be careful here. We all know how treacherous this turn two is on the outlap. No downforce, really, compared to a road car, so you really have to be careful. There we go. Get it on the track. Got one slower car coming up on my right. Or a car. I don't know if it's a slower one. Get it up to fifth gear, though. Yeah, it is a Chrysler. <laughs> it's a Chrysler LeBaron pace car, which is awesome to see. All right, did another pit stop. So far, so good on the stops. I know the at the start of the stream, I was talking about things that I was worried about, and that was a big one. Just the no speed limit. It's, I think enough cars are out of the race now that it's uh, enough cars are out of the race that it's a little less chaotic, but it's still plenty. So plenty of cars to, if you pit at the same time as somebody else, just to cause the wrong thing. Somebody coming in when you're coming out, or you slow down a bit more than they do coming into the pits. That's always a concern. All right, I'm not sure who I'm chasing here. Oh, Richard Wilkes. This is uh, the creator, one of the creators of the mod. And the, the guy who gave me his car for this, he opened up this entry for me. 
So I have to thank him for that. He also helped me out with the setup a little bit. Although it's it's changed a little since he gave it to me, but it was a great bass line to start with for it, so... Thank you, Richard. Sorry that I'm putting you a lap down. Or potentially will here. Yeah, I don't think Yuha's got any pace for me, at least right now. So I'm not too worried about him, but I would love to... I'm not that far behind Grant. So if Grant has you know, a little bit of an issue, or I start picking up a little more pace, 10 seconds is not is not too far. 30 seconds to the leader, he's going to have to have an issue at this point for me to catch Fredrickson, but you never know. All right. He's actually going really well right now, which I guess you could expect. I've got to stiffen that rear bar a little bit, getting some understeer behind him. <laughs> yes, basically my team boss. I'm going to have just enough pace to get up near him, but be a lot. Oh, he slowed down there. I did not predict that. That was almost bad. Thank you, Richard. I almost rear-ended him. I'm, I'm not confident enough through the traffic. I think I'm, I'm uh, flirting with disaster a little bit. Cue the molly hatchet, but I'm kind of getting alongside of a lot of cars and not just taking the spot away, but I'm worried they're going to <laughs> drive into me. I mean, I know Richard wouldn't do anything intentionally, but you just don't know what, what could happen. Yeah, three laps, but three laps is not enough, so I'm going to end up short pitting here a little bit at the end. And uh, what's going to help is that I, I'll take a little less fuel in the car, so I'm going to save some time on the pit road, but it's not going to be 30 seconds worth of time. We are over halfway. And yeah, so far so good. I'm, I'm very happy with this. I would love to be leading or have a, a clear shot to win, but I'm very much still in play. On the lead lap, third position, not too far off a second. And the leader is driving a Buick, so I guess <laughs> I don't wish Jacob any negative uh, during the race, but my god, what are we doing? Ah, that was fun. That's Indianapolis, isn't it? All right. <laughs> We're okay there. He just moved a little bit more when I got... I was going for the move as well. Three of 31 is my position. So, I'm going to start short filling now. The plan would be to take 32.6 gallons, depending on how much fuel I've got. I might take 33. But, basically, on this stint, I'm going to check my strategy. Yeah, I want to make it to lap 124, which I'm going to have no issue doing. But I'm basically going to go 25 lap stints to the end of the race after this. So we still got two more pit stops. Got a lot of understeer there. It's all right. But yeah, 25 lap stints. So pit at lap 125, 150, 175. That's 
that is the rest of the race if it goes green, which it looks like it's going to. But I'm going to start eating into my fuel reserve now a little bit, which means if there is a yellow at some point, it's going to be hard for me to deviate strategies. I don't think there's going to be a yellow, though. I'm really hoping there isn't at this phase. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow past my. Uh, oh no, Brian is out of the race. I wonder if he had a crash or a mechanical. <laughs> we don't talk about going side by side in IndyCar too. I'm still. You'll notice I haven't done another IndyCar two race in about a month now, and uh, I'm just a bit <laughs> a bit sad about what happened last time. Both on two fronts. The first race got messed up and then the second one I hit Willie T. Ribs or he hit me really but uh, it's taking all my willpower not to take that stream down but I'll leave it up posterity Yeah, it looks like Yuha is going to go a lap down here in a second. At this rate, I'm not going to finish on the lead lap, unfortunately, which does even better for my uh, fuel strategy <laughs> to make it to the end. But Fredrickson is just so quick today. I really don't have a lot more pace in this car, unfortunately. It's just with my setup and, and what I've been able to get out of it, this is, this is pretty much my pace so far. Really, really loose there. Back down to the. I just went up on the bar because I was understeering. Now I'm oversteering. The Buick is a fast car. But it's, you know, historically an unreliable car. And I don't, I do not wish anything on Fredrickson, but if something at this stage was to happen to him, it might be the reliability of the car. But I'm sure he knows what he can do with it to uh, preserve the car, so we'll see. At least I hope he does. <laughs> It'd be gutting to uh, be this dominant and then have the car break for sure. Yeah, for folks that have never seen the 1987 500, it's a very good one. Maybe the... Well, the racing is good. It's fun to watch the race itself, but the whole evolution of the race is just a, a wild one. I, I won't spoil it here. You can easily find out what happened. Is these two going to go side by side in front? And uh, I feel like these are the same cars that I did this with a few laps ago, but a lot easier this time by. Car behind scoots in right behind me. Right. So 90 laps to go. It's gonna go by so fast. loosen my grip a little bit. I'm really really hugging the steering wheel today. I'm softer on the rear bars just to give it a little more confidence through the corners. It's getting pretty neutral again.
Whoa. That was an awkward little wiggle there. I almost hit the wall. Very much trying to avoid that for this race. Pinches me down low. Car got really light there. That was awkward. All right, better to save the car than worry about the lap time. Lost about a second doing that, though. I probably could have entered the corner a bit more confidently there, and it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the display that's telling me what my bars are set to is not on the screen, and I couldn't get a SimHub one to uh, to make it show. I'm running an ultra-wide screen, so I can see a little bit more to the right and to the left than, than you all can. Um, but the display for it's in pounds, so it's like a really weird number. But I'm, I'm towards the bottom end of the bar on the rear right now, and I'm pretty stiff in the front. So I basically got the car set up to understeer as much as I can. Too fast coming into one. All right, Yuha's gone a lap down. I'm about five seconds from going a lap down myself. So, well into the second half of the race, but. Fredrickson's just got that pace today. spin in front of me I just got I got way out of it but I kind of had to there Ugh, it's gonna lose me a ton of time keep it in fifth gear wake you up <laughs> just when things are getting processional we wake you up might have been Greg it's all right I lost a lot of time but I was I'm going to go a lap down I think no matter what unfortunately We'll see if Fredrickson, if he gets by me, and see if I can slipstream him and, uh... Oh, Yuha is out. Oh, boy. Wow, it's far into the race for that to happen. August is out. Uh-oh, we're starting to get a rash of uh, DNFs here. Pretty late in the running. 85 laps to go. Got 15 gallons of fuel. And uh, I was looking for lap 125, and I'm going to absolutely blast past that. Oh, did August and Yuha hit each other? see a car in my mirror, and I have a feeling that's Fredrickson. Well, with Yuha out, David Sabre's the car behind me. I think if, if I can have this car hold on to the end, I think I can get a podium out of this, which much more than I could have expected, so... But still a lot of job at hand to, uh, to finish that. 117 laps in of the 200 couple more pit stops to go and, uh, and a lot of hard driving I try my best here to just do good laps to stay in front of Fredrickson as long as I can I'm not gonna block him but I'm not gonna just let him by super easy 
<laughs> the, I think Mario Andretti was easily a lap ahead of everybody by the time he uh, finally blew up. It's, it's not unrealistic. a bit wide. Just nip the apron there. I don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah, we're right at the top of the oil range. Lower that boost a little bit. The car's last 10 gallons of fuel, it's quite easy to uh, to go fast, as you could imagine. If I was within, you know, five seconds of somebody in the final 10 laps or something, I would, I would goose it up a little bit and risk the glory of passing somebody with a few laps to go. But where I sit right now, I'm not sure I'm going to have that opportunity. It looks like Fredrickson's in the pits. He's going to have to stretch it to do... Okay, so we're at 120. It's 80 laps to go. I don't... I don't know if he's going to be able to make it on one more stop after this. Oh, Fredrickson missed his pit stall. Interesting. Oh, I just got so loose there. Probably looks like nothing on the on the video, but I thought my life was ending for a second. <laughs> I think I got around that lapped car, and then I got a bunch of air on the front. Yeah, we're. I don't see any reason to deviate from my strategy. I've uh, I've done well so far. I'm in second right now, but it's on it's on fuel stops and, and stuff. It's on strategy, I guess you'd say. Oh, Dave's out, huh? Man, a lot of attrition here. How many cars are still running at this point? It's got to be less than 20, right? Uh, hate to see somebody out of the race, especially this late in it. Once you get over halfway, it kind of feels like you're on the downhill to the end and your car fails you. I really hope mine sticks together for the rest of this. Got five gallons of fuel left and uh, I'm doing really, really well on, on fuel. 17 cars left, yeah. That's what it feels like. It feels pretty empty compared to those first that first stint. That was wild. I am leading the race with four gallons of fuel here. It's 
some slower traffic. I'm going to try to make my intentions clear, really go to the inside. Hope the uh, Granatelli car there sees me, he does. Underneath him, really narrow entry, have to back out quite a bit. Fredrickson came out of the pits 14 seconds behind me and he's gained quite a lot. 2.9 gallons of fuel left. I don't like passing on the right side, but I guess that's how we're doing it. Alright, I think I'm going to pit next time. I could probably go two more laps, but just to be safe with it. Getting towards that part of the race where if I missed a pit stall or something, like I don't want to not have fuel enough to get around a lap. I'm so good on fuel now. Oh, that was bad. I'm so good on fuel now that uh, I don't need to worry about things. All right, so I'm taking 32.6 gallons. I'm taking four tires this time. And uh, 32 gallons, so it's going to be a bit quicker of a pit stop. I think my last stop was 20 seconds. I'm hoping this one is a bit, a bit less. All right, come down into the pits. Got a few cars down here. You just hope this wasn't the wrong lap to pit. You know, I see some cars pulling away. Slow it down. All right, get on to the inside. Whoa, locking up. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Man, that was a that was a fast entry. All right, we will try to exit the pits. Oh, why didn't the car pull away? Come on, there it goes. Ah, uh, I over revved it a bit. Why does it say pit exit open? It's not a yellow flag, right? I over revved it quite a lot. That was bad. That's the kind of stuff that blows your engine, makes you crash. Yeah, good thing I'm changing all four. All right, I think Grant's right on me now. Down to turn three. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. All right, I'm fighting with second. He runs really deep there. This is second place right in front of me. And I have to think we both have one pit stop left, so this is this is real. Oh, he's a bit slow there coming out of four. Getting a low side of him. I got full fuel and stuff. Oh, we're side by side down the front stretch. Good sketch. Is he hanging in there? Oh, he did. <laughs> it's alright. He's got a lot less fuel than me, or he should have warmer tires and stuff, so hopefully I can stick with him here. Oh, uh, I really hope I didn't damage the engine much in that. I, I over it, I think, twice, trying to get out. But, let's see if I can catch back up to uh, Grant here. Still a lot to play for. I would much rather get a third place finish than crash, so... I'm going to try my best not to throw this whole thing away at this point. It is AJ Foyt's car. <laughs> Alright, we're looking for lap 150 on the next stop or anything after that. Oh, I kept saying one stop. I got two more stops to go. gonna do anything stupid here but just need to uh I'm gonna just put the pressure on a little bit Peter, Peter Klavik is out of the race. A 
little more rear bar just to see if I can carry the speed a bit better. Having a slight understeer tendency, which is what I like, but it's, it's turning into go time here. Got a carrot out front. Something to chase. A rabbit. Dang, I think I messed up my my tire strategy. I was supposed to only take three on that stop. It's all right. I'm sticking with him, so we're we're pretty uh, even on pace here. steering a little bit keep it in it give it a little more rear bar just up up a little bit whoa it's a car on fire there was a car on fire there in the grass it wasn't Fredrickson. All right, we're in. What I call the uh, final stint range. So I, I do need to stop two more times on the strategy I'm on. I'm going to stop. He's just sitting there. What's he doing? I need to stop probably a lap 155. One, well, 150 was my original number, but I'm going to go way past that. And then again, 175 or so was my final stop. If we got a yellow flag right now, I would pit immediately because I could do it on one more stop from here. It would be a little bit, a bit of a stretch, but you could definitely do two 33 lap runs and uh, and make it to the end. So if we get a yellow flag, I am pitting pretty much no matter what until we get to our pit stop. Try not to just follow Grant. It'd be nice to catch up to him a bit more, but he's he's very quick. Oliveira. It's nice seeing another car that I'm actually racing. I feel like I've just been seeing lap traffic the whole race since that first stint. barbecue there. I'm gaining a tiny bit on Grant, but one little mistake, and I wasn't great through turn four there, but he'll, he'll gain it back. We're really, really close in lap times. Yeah, lucky we don't overheat in dirty area, right? Doesn't seem to affect it. I don't know if it's coated in or not. Oh, he's a bit wide here through turn two. Yes, the carbecue.
We're getting to the uh, point in the race where everybody's was uh, making puns. Oily Vera. That's not nice. I'm sure they're distraught over that. I'd be so upset if my car breaks. Tried to, I've been trying to be so good to it this whole race. All right, we're catching some live traffic here, so this could get spicy. Slower cars. Still need to be patient, but you never know if it could work out better for me than Grant. Grant got around this car quite easily. I'm going to catch him probably in turn four here. Yeah. Just back off just a little bit, get on the throttle that slight bit earlier, and uh, go low. He gained on me through that. A little hot into turn one. Got the car set up extremely neutral at the moment. It's just floating kind of in the middle of the, in a drift a little bit. All right, it gets around that car. Sixteen or seventeen cars left at this point, so we've, we're about half of the field. And it's been a mix of mostly accidents, but some DNFs as well. Failures. Oh, yellow, thank you. <laughs> Just saw that flash by. Oh, I saw a twitch out of Grant there in front, coming by the Shearson car. I don't know if he hit something or net code or whatever that was. All right, I've got 16 gallons of fuel left on lap 140. The Shearson car here, it's not been the most easy to pass this race. Time this route, I can get him down the back stretch. Uh, I had to lift out of it there, and he's going to have. A better run than me. It's not ideal. He's gonna back off. All right, that worked out. <laughs> Still lost a little bit of time. Looks like Grant's gonna get held up now. So I'm chasing second position here with about 60 laps to go. I've got two more pit stops to do. I'm gonna stop here in probably about 10 laps. And then try to go another 25 before the final pit stop with about 25 laps to go. And hopefully, we'll see what happens here. But I think Fredrickson out front, our leader, he's uh, very far up the road. It's been unreal quick all day. So not sure we've got much for him. But I think Grant here and getting the second position is very much to play for. I've just got to play this right and uh, just stay clean, stay good through traffic. Try to make the most out of my pit stops. I feel like I'm a little quicker than I'm through the pit stops, but it could be who knows what we're doing strategy wise, so. It's tough to say if that'll continue or not. But I definitely gained on him a lot through the last sequence of pits. Almost overran my stall last time, which is would be bad. We don't know what the leader has to do. I I imagine they're also going to two stops. I think they've just got us on raw pace. He was able to really push that Buick. He's got a Buick engine to my Cosworth. So I don't know if that's the difference. Fredrickson, I think he's pretty experienced with this stuff. So it's probably more than, like, like most things, it's more than one thing. He's probably done better job with pits, better job with, with strategy. And then maybe the car is a little better too, but I think he's uh, 
He's executing really well. Yeah, I think the only mistake he's made so far was overrunning a pit stall based on what everybody said, so... He doesn't seem to be pulling on us like he once was. I'll, I'll say that. So I don't know if he's boosted down or not, but... He does seem like he's slightly off the pace. He's pulled out a little bit still in this stint, though. A couple seconds. So, it's going to take a little bit more than that. He could he could afford to go conservative here for the final part of the race, which might, might be a good idea with the Buick. A bit high there. I'm all right. So Grant's been able to pull out for me with all this traffic. He's just a bit better at getting through it than I am. That one here through turn two, it's a bit awkward, but got it all right. All right, four laps away from my original goal lap. We're going to be going quite a bit longer. Soften up the bar in the rear just a tiny bit. I found when I start taking a little less fuel in the pit stops, the car gets a little more feisty because... I just have a little bit more grip at the end of the run on the light fuel, so the car's a, a bit more twitchy, a bit more alive. Grant just set a best lap. So he's on his he's on some pace right now. It's a bit too narrow there coming into two. Starting to get that I get like tunnel vision a little bit. I gotta like focus on something else. It's hard though. <laughs> get that like real intense focus for now a couple hours. I can't even imagine this with the G-force that's involved. How anybody could ever call a racing driver not an athlete is insane. They they clearly do not know <laughs> what it's what's going on. Real toasty at the top of the oil oil temperature range here. All right, 4.2 gallons. Seems like Grant is kind of on my strategy now. Either that or he's going to pit here in a lap or two, but we'll see. Interested to see how the uh, how it works out. Ooh, did you hear that little cough of the engine? I don't like that. <laughs> Interested to see how the fuel, uh, the uh, pit cycle works out. Just with, it seems like I've been a, a skosh quicker than Grant on every stop so far. But we'll see. All right, yeah, Jacob Fredrickson's in the pits. Ooh, that's him coming out right now. So past the leader there, the the guy who's been leading all day. I'm in front of him, very temporarily. <laughs> 
151 though. He's got one more stop to do. Unfortunately, I have two stops to do. Alright, we got some lap cars coming up. If I catch up to them, I might pit next lap, depending. It's just one car there, so it's not a huge deal. If there's two or three cars, then I might might pit early, but I actually I gotta pit actually this lap. Alright. Alright, so keeping that left front on. Oh shoot, I didn't change my fuel. Never set up my pit stop before this, but we're good. All right, I'm going to come in now. And uh, let's hope this is a good one again. Been so far so good in the pit lane. Remember, no speed limit or anything. It's all up to you. Not a lot of cars here now, so I can afford to go a bit faster. This is Grant in front of me. He actually has the stall directly in front of me. Man. Ah, that wasn't good. I stopped too early, like a fraction, fraction too early. So this is Grant, I think, or maybe he hasn't stopped yet. I don't know. Oh, there's a different car. Overrevved it again. Man, it was really slow on the release, too. All right, just focus on getting out of the pits. That was a crummy pit stop by myself. And I have a feeling this car coming out of the pits in front of me, hopefully I don't catch him here. Yeah, I, I messed up a few things in that in that pit stop, but it's all right. All right, right at the top of the temp range. Oh, bogging down a whole bunch there. Ah, needed to execute that a bit better than I did, but it's... We're still in the race, I don't have damage or anything like that, so I'm not going to worry about it. But Alright, one more stop to go. I'm looking for laps 175. And uh, we'll see, see how this all shakes out here. I did only take three tires on that stop, so I have to be, just be aware that the car might might just handle slightly differently than it has been. Yeah, Grant Grant was quicker. That's unfortunate. I thought I might have been able to have a little bit a little bit on him, but it seems like he's uh he had maybe a couple slow stops, and then that was a good one, and I had a bit of a slow stop there, so. It's all, all equaled out now, but got plenty of racing left to go here. So we're in the last quarter of the race, coming to lap 156. Got a uh, Mir's car. He slows down a whole bunch. Imagine at this point, some of the lap traffic will will make it a little easier to get out of the way. I don't see Grant anymore, and I was I saw him for the entire stint last time. So we'll see how it all all goes. for me. 
makes it fairly awkward to get through. Oh, that was just not the best. I wish I, I probably can somewhere, but I wish the field of view on the rear view was a bit better. really bad set of corners there. I lost two seconds off my best lap time through there. see Grant up the way. I think Grant's the next car in front of me. He's just about a straightaway ahead at the moment. Yeah, it's been no yellows today. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. I figured there would be a couple, but I, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said I wasn't uh, happy. <laughs> I, did, I don't think the yellow was going to go very well. Somebody was bound to get a black flag. So if it's, unless it's necessary and you actually need a yellow because something weird happens. I think it's best to not. I know that takes a lot out, but just understeering a whole bunch there. The one car exiting the pits. Get around him. Yeah, it could very well be the fastest 500. I mean, without a yellow, it's a uh, it's surely going to be way faster than real life. I know watching, it's probably a little more exciting if there's yellows and stuff, but is what it is, I guess. Apparently would have spiced it up with some strategy. I just have no visibility to my right and my left, which is what's, what's hard. I can see Grant up there. I didn't... I don't know what happened. Just wait for the chat to catch up, I guess, but... I don't know why it blew. <laughs> Engine blown. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I mean, I did over rev it a couple times, and maybe that's, maybe that's all it took. Oh my god, 39 laps to go. <laughs> They're gonna change the tires. I don't think that's gonna fix it. Ah, oh, I'm so bummed out. I have to think it was... I have to think it was because I over-revved it in the pits a couple times. I did over-rev it a couple times coming out of the pits. I know. I just finished third in the Brickyard 400, but not <laughs> not the Indianapolis 500. Ah, uh, exactly 400 miles. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it must have been the over revs. I don't know. Could have been random chance. That's so disappointing to get that far into it. We'll, uh, we'll see it, see it happen. Yeah, they fueled up anyway. Uh, that's so...
might not show any smoke or anything. Nah, it doesn't sh doesn't show any. There it is. <laughs> it is a gut punch. What did I do? I, I barely over-revved it twice. A lot of bumps on the pit lane there. I don't think I would have changed anything that I did, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see if I can find out why it would have blown, but it could just be random chance, which is super gutting. Uh, I was really looking forward to trying to get to Grant. He wasn't too far up the road. It does suck. He really wasn't too far up the road from me. Yeah, I don't think I did anything wrong, to be honest, but this is just kind of how it how it goes sometimes. We'll uh, take a look at, at our leader here. Ah, uh, that, is, that is racing, isn't it? I think it was a random failure, to be honest. I, uh, I don't feel like I did anything bad enough to, to break the engine. So I think I think it was a ra random failure, which hurts even more. If I had done, like, constantly been pushing it to try to catch somebody or something, then, you know. I know. I mean, imagine that's very similar to what happened in real life. So we've got Fredericks in here, and uh, he doesn't have that many laps to go. I know, Billy. I felt like I was running a solid race, like for especially for a first race with a league I've never raced with. I felt like I uh, I was doing a great job, and so that's it hurts even more <laughs> that I didn't make any mistakes really. Yeah, a little bit of its connection, but they also drift a bit, maybe a bit more than they should. I don't know. He's got uh, 33 laps to go, so I'd expect Fredrickson to get in the pits one more time here. I figure I'll I'm going to stay and watch the end of the race if anybody wants to stay with me, but uh, I'm just so bummed out about that. A third place sounded very nice. I finished third in a 400 mile race. I don't know how to get back to the start of the replay or else I would... I know. <laughs> Bismarck, you didn't have to put it that way, but yes, I, I did lose a reliability battle with a Buick. There is a random failure chance, and I think that's what hit me. I appreciate everybody that, that came to watch this today. It was, um, I was so excited to do this race and preparing for a couple weeks. I haven't prepared this much for a race, I guess since the, the, the HRRC last fall. But even then, I feel like I, I did more for this than I have done for races in a long time. And uh, it felt fun, it was fun to, uh, to get into it. But that's not how I wanted it to end. <laughs> At least it wasn't my fault, really. I mean, I, I'll talk to the... Uh, I know a couple of the folks that make the mod, so I'll ask them if over-revving it a couple times broke it. But other than the two times I hit the rev limiter exiting the pits, um, I don't think I... I don't think I did anything wrong otherwise. So Fredrickson here, where are we at? Jump back out here for a second. So Fredrickson... It's on lap 169. Grant, we'll watch Grant for a second. He's not too far behind. Oh, he's a lap down. Oh, he must have pit. Grant must have pit already. Yeah, I mean, I definitely did over rev leaving the pits. So if that broke it, then it's my fault. But it's such a small amount. <laughs>
Well, at least I made it farther as well than my uh, my last IndyCar 2 race. <laughs> Fredrickson, I really hope he can pull this off, though. This is an impressive run. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'll run... So these guys obviously have a league um, that this, this race is a part of. And I don't know... I don't think... It's tough for me to commit to an entire series just because it's a lot. It's a time commitment. That's uh, it's tough to do and, and make sure that I'm actually there. But I wouldn't mind doing a random race here and there, and uh, if they'll have me, it could be fun. I definitely after this, I kind of want to do this again. <laughs> I don't know if they're planning to do this same race next year with with the Indy cars or uh, or sorry, the 87 cars or something different, but. Cars do not have a rev limiter, no. Or they might, they might, but it's very high. It's too high. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Sundays are are kind of difficult for me most of the time, so that's where where it gets hard to do these races. But I want to know what happened. It was it really random? Did I over rev it too much? I'll almost feel better if it's because I over-revved it, because at least then I know next time, if I don't do that, then I'll have a, uh, I don't have a chance. Alright, Jacob here, though, is just steady does it. Steady does it. What is he doing for lap times at this point? So he's doing 44 threes kind of average. He had a 1 in there, 44-1, which is a good lap. He's not so much faster. I think he was doing faster laps earlier. Uh, he's just been in the 44s. To be honest, the car felt a lot different than I was expecting it to. At the start of the race, the um, I just had a lot of oversteer. So much oversteer compared to normal. And I, I was not expecting that. I'm still here. I'm in 12th. Uh, you probably can't see the whole thing, but I'm in 12th position right now. Um, Grant's really backed off. I don't blame him. <laughs> now that I'm out of the race, he doesn't have too much to, to worry about. So we, we should be expecting uh, Jacob here to come into the pits fairly soon. It almost sounds like he's not pushing because the rev is so low. Yeah, I'll be looking for, uh, I'm gonna definitely switch gears to rally now, <laughs> uh, for this coming week. I don't know when I'm gonna stream that, but, uh, Sim Rally Masters, which is the rally championship that I do, um, the historic rally championship, essentially, that I do, is, uh, is live right now with their, their third round of the season. The Romanian Winter Rally, so it's a winter rally, even though it's turning to summertime here in in Boston um, we'll be doing a winter rally so I've done a small bit of preparation for it but only a couple nights <clears throat> and uh, it's live right now so I really got to figure out what I'm gonna do do it all There's uh, not many cars left in the race, so looks like, oh, we've had another failure with uh, Cesarius failure. So I'm, I'm 14th. I'm going to finish 14th today, assuming there's no penalties or anything like that.
There's no plans to do any other HRRC right now, but uh, I've got a couple ideas for some some events that I'm I'm thinking of planning. Yeah, I blew an engine a lap 161, and uh, we don't know exactly why. I definitely wasn't, I for sure was not uh, overheating the car, so that is one thing that I definitely wasn't doing. I think I saw only one time I got the car above 220, so I can't imagine that was that was the reason. I hit the rev limiter twice coming out of the pits, and that's really the only thing I think I did that could have blown the engine. Um, so, maybe just random luck, because that is also a thing in this. There are random engine failures. <laughs> We're watching the leader right now, uh, Jacob Fredrickson. And he's had a torrid pace today, so he, uh... He really... I would say deserves this, I guess, as much as anybody, but he's done done such a great great pace so far, and uh, with the Buick, nonetheless, we just hope the, uh, the car makes it to the end. It was coughing, wasn't it? I don't know if those coughs are real or it's just like a little feature. Yeah, it might have gone 221 a couple times. I don't know. I mean, like, is one degree? Is it that, <laughs> that specific? I don't know. All right, here comes Jacob into the pits. So Fredrickson coming on down. Let's hope for a good pit stop for him. I want him to win. I'd love, love for him to uh, have a good finish here. Locks at the brakes a bit, sliding in. I don't know where his pit stall is. Looks like he found it, though. All right. So he's getting his uh, tires changed and everything, most likely. This final pit stop for him. All right. Bounces down. Changed, I think, probably four tires. He's being very cautious with the revs. I, that's maybe what did it. Maybe that's what did it. I mean, I was kind of spinning the tires and everything. Right, if you look back to qualifying, I was in the 240s temperature for the whole whole thing. I mean, he, he just rolled away from the pits there. So... Maybe that's really what did it, is I, I just over-revved. But we'll look back here. Here's uh, Grant. So Grant is actually... He's on the same lap, but he's pretty far back. Sorry, it's probably pretty loud there. Oh, Richard Wilkes has blown an engine. So Richard Wilkes is the creator of the mod. The physics side of it, anyway. Or, or one of the creators, so... We got two cars on the lead lap. It looks like Grant's 26 seconds behind uh, Jacob. And we got 20 laps to go. So we'll see uh, see if anything changes here. But 20 laps to go for the Buick-powered car. Jacob Fredrickson trying to go for the win. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe doing the burnout in the pits is a bad idea. I mean, it definitely rev it high. But... It's a rough one. I'm gutted. I'm really, uh... I thought I'd be able to make the car last the whole time. <laughs> Only... Only like if you actually like it. All right, I'm taking a look here. Let me do this. I'll uh, I'll be able to pull this over so you, you all can see it a bit. So this is our running order as it stands currently. So Jacob Fredrickson is up in the lead. 182 laps complete. And uh, Grant Riddall is in second place. 
also on lap 182, but he's quite far behind. So Jacob's passing the start finish line there. Grant's on the back straightaway. So he's about a half a lap down. Half a lap down. But reliability is a huge thing in this, obviously. So it is a 500, isn't it? <laughs> we got Anders Nilsson in third. He's coming into the pits, actually. He's a lap down, though. Lap down in third place. We got John Thim in fourth. A couple laps down, a few laps down, three, three back in the Hemmelgarn car. And then Adam Hickman, who started out on the front row, going the distance though, but four laps back in fifth. So, man, there's only two cars on the lead lap here with, with just uh, 20 or uh, 16, if I can count, 16 laps to go. 16 laps. Put this back. Put it full screen here. Six dollar ball bearing. That's the that's the classic story, right? That the cheap over the shelf part is the thing that breaks. Yeah, Wilkes blew up most recently. Yep. But we're watching here the uh, first place runner, Jacob Fredrickson. Tons of attrition. Yeah, a lot of attrition just through engine blowups. You know, it like I probably had a random failure. If it was because of the two times I over revved, it's extremely touchy. So you have to be much nicer to the engine than I was. I thought I was being very gentle with it. Yeah, blew my engine going down the back straight away on lap 162. Or 161, I think it was. Came across the line to coast into the pits. Spot in the pits. We'll go on board with uh, Jacob here for a second. Have to imagine the water temp isn't uh, isn't accurate. Grant's probably just trying to make sure he gets to the end. Oh, Grant spun in the pit lane. Hold on, let's let's jump out and see where Grant's at. Grant's still in second, but he's a lap down now. And he's uh, coming out of turn four, so he's still about a half lap back. Car on fire here. Now they're blown up car. Who's that? Is that Hickman? Here he is. Bruno. Ugh. Another car. Bites the dust. At least it's not just me. A lot of cars have blown up today. We have saw, we saw a few barbecues happening. We're just too rough on these uh, riddle machines, clearly. He'll get safely down to the fence, though. So Fredrickson is in a lap of his own. 12 laps to go. And, uh... Oh, man, I, I hope for him that his engine doesn't give up at this point. Yeah, I have to imagine this is more than the actual race, to be honest. There goes Fredrickson on by. We'll just see who's who's still left out here. I think this is Hickman coming on by then. Or no, that's not that's not Hickman. <laughs> it 
If everybody blows up, then something was wrong. It is almost a destruction dare. Oh, that was really wide from the uh, Rick Mears car. There goes Fredrickson on by. I don't got no sponsors or pit crew. It's a, it's a team of one over here. I think the only person, or the main person I have to thank is Richard Wilkes for uh, giving me both the car and uh, the baseline setup that I that I tweaked from. So I appreciate that very much. And uh, Jason White as well helped helped out a whole bunch. Just firstly bugging me enough times that I actually did this because he he has asked me at least the last year, if not more, to do this. And uh, I'm very happy I did. I'm always weary to commit to things, but I'm very happy I did this. Oh, he's right, right down on the line. I think he's going to pass Hickman here. Coming to line, I think 10 laps to go at this point. Yeah, it was Derek Daly's car in real life. Where did he finish? Let me look here at the uh, 1987 Indy 500 results. It was really the endurance part of the Indy 500 was up until the the late 90s. I mean, even in the late 90s, because they kind of <laughs> they kind of restarted everything. But yeah. I mean, only two cars finished on the lead lap in the real race. Here goes past Rick Mears' car. It's really making that Buick sing today. The front wing almost looked crooked on this car. I wonder if it's just the like, net code. Oh yeah, I was looking at the results for Daly. Yes, yeah, so Daly finished 133 laps. So I went out on the same lap Danny Sullivan went out on, or just one lap further in real life. But if you look at the real real results, the uh, top seven were all Cosworth DF, uh, DFXs. So it's clearly the most reliable car. All right, coming to the line, six laps to go for Fred Fredrickson. The madman's gonna do it, driving a Buick. He's catching up to AJ Foyt's car in front, but at this point he definitely doesn't have to pass him. If we just quickly take a peek, I'll take a peek here at the standings. He's uh, two laps or a lap and a half ahead, basically, of Grant in second place, so. This has definitely been a, uh, a race of attrition. <laughs> it looks like somebody else just DNF too. Ah, uh, Michael Dreschler DNF'd as well. We officially have nine cars still running. Nine cars. Still in the race. Less than real life. I don't know if I'll do Indy 500 Evolution again. I, we did that just about a year ago. That's fun, but there's not too much depth there in that. It gets a little... A little samey. Just racing the same, like, five tracks over and over and over again. It's fun, though. Fun game. Alright. Draco coming out. Fourth corner there. Coming to the line for four laps to go. Cross your fingers that he uh, <laughs> he's able to make it these last handful of laps because 
At this point, if anybody gets a, an engine failure, it's just absolutely gutting. Making it 400 miles was bad enough, but we've had a few folks blow up in the last 100 miles, so... Yes, if you want to be a, a millionaire, start with a billion dollars. And then do some auto racing. <laughs> Whole pack of cars ahead here. We might have to pass. Alright, three laps left for Jacob. Go on board with him here for the final few laps. He's going to have to work his way past these, uh, these lap cars in front. Stuck up behind a couple lap cars, but he really can afford He could just ride here. He's coming to two to go. He's just going to easily take it. Car sweeping out a little wide in front of him. Make his way nice and nice and easily past lap traffic. Every car that's still running, everyone's doing an incredible job getting this far into it. Alright, so coming through turns four. It's got one more lap to go. Yeah, he's being real tentative on everything, but I don't blame him. Just nice and easy. It's going to be in an awkward spot here. Waits, waits for lap car. Lap car is also waiting. This gets a bit awkward side by side through the corner. Yeah, I don't know how he got the speed out of this car. Ooh, he nipped the apron there and got a little wiggly. All right, we'll join him outside down the back stretch. So here he comes. <laughs> With the Buick stock block engine. Somehow... Fredrickson's going to make this thing last for 500 miles. One of, I think, nine cars that's going to finish the race. Comes out of turn number four, heads to the line. The wins. Indy 500. Fredrickson there, getting the win. Man, what a, what a race for him. Look down the order here. So Fredrickson completes all 200 laps in two and a half hours. Grant Riddall comes across the line there to finish second. Anders Nielsen's going to get third position. There's Grant and uh, AJ Foyt's car. Awesome to race with him. I, I was really, really hoping I was going to be able to uh, pass him towards the end of the race. Seems like he had to back off quite a lot. And uh, maybe he just did that because there wasn't much to push for. But that was a pretty wild race. I'm, I'm so disappointed that I blew up. <laughs> It, um, I don't know. What could I do? I'm, I'll sure, I'm sure I'll learn a bit over the next days over where I broke the car. But if it truly was random, then that's just, that's just rotten luck. Now that's Indianapolis, isn't it? I hope it was fun to watch. Um, we'll look at the full results here in a second as everybody wanders their way into the pit lane. At least for those 400 miles that I was running, I hope it was entertaining. Uh, I had a lot of people in here today, which was which was fun. We got a car blown up here coming to the pits. I think that's Hickman, maybe. Could have blown it up on purpose, maybe. <laughs> to the line, I don't know. Or Hackman, okay. After the yellow. After the checkers, yeah. Car sideways in the pits. But that's awesome. Alright, we'll look at the final results here. We'll uh, expand this a bit so that you can all see it. All right. <clears throat> so Jacob Fredrickson wins. Only car to complete 200 laps. Grant and I were with him there into the final final quarter of the race, but I blew the engine. Grant Riddall finishes second with AJ Foyt's car. Two laps down. And Anders Nilsson finishes in third on the podium. John Thim, Adam Hackman... 
Uh, Filippo Mar Marazzi, Luciano finishes after him, and I wasn't able to see all of them because I guess we're, <laughs> we're loading the grid. Loading the grid. I'm gutted. That was uh, a lot of preparation for, for it to end with a blown engine. Didn't feel like I had a lot of say in it, but like I said, I'm sure I'll learn over the coming days what could have happened that uh, that what I did over revving in the pits, running it a little too hot, I'm sure something that I could have prevented, but it was fun nonetheless. I had a lot of fun racing with the ISO folks, and um, I could definitely see myself coming back to race with them at some point, but no immediate plans to do so. I will be doing some rally here in the coming days, most likely next weekend, if not a little bit before then, but appreciate you all joining so much. There's so many people in here today. It was a lot of fun. It was fun to like plan something far out in advance and do it, and... Uh, Hopefully better luck next time. So have a great rest of your weekend and everything. I'll see you all again later.